Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, I wanted to talk about the 20 million download campaign that is coming up for uh, the North America side. We only have it here as the 17 million download campaign. So if you're someone wondering, like, hey, why we call it the 20 million? It's because that's what it was called on the JP side. And this is the one that has the free SSR ticket. And I've decided to give some advice if you're deciding to uh, summon for it. Give the units that are pretty much... I think are worth going for and then touch on some of the other ones a little bit uh, that's gonna be today's video I hope you like it if you do feel free to leave a like comment down below on what how you would plan to spend the ticket actually because I'm kind of curious to see how it is and if you feel like uh, saying like hey like I'm ignoring a unit that maybe some other people would really like <laughs> feel free to kind of plead your case for them and I'll gladly listen to them. I'm always interested to see what other people have to say and uh, I think I already said subscribe and everything. If I sound a little tired, it's because I literally just tried to record this video and it was an hour long. So I decided to make it <laughs> dead slower. So let's go. Uh, first things first, um, let me just say right out. If there's a unit here that you specifically really like, um, you should get them. Fogo is a game about character. Get the character you like. The game is easy enough that you could, in theory, beat any boss of Matahari, and there have been people who've made videos specifically beating some of the hardest bosses with just Matahari soloing. So, pick who you want. That's my general advice and for most things. Uh, if you're someone here who's a little bit more like, well, I don't really have a favorite and I kind of want to know who's good, then I will gladly help you. So let me start off by giving you the one that most people... When this ticket was originally released, was called the "Hey, the free to waiver is now free to play," because almost everyone in the entirety of the ticket selection is going to pick waiver. And the reason is, is that waiver is an extremely splashable support unit. You can kind of work on anything because he just gives a generic 50% through 30% on his skill one, 10% on skill two and 10% uh, on his skill 3, and then not only that, he increases the party's attack and defense, 30% and 500 on this, but the 30% for attack is nice. Um, this defense is 30% and then the damage taken is 500, so combined with these two, the, the second and third skill make a pretty nice turn 1 damage. And Discerning Eye, which is uh, increases their crit damage for three turns, which is a 50% crit damage that you can just give to anyone. And it's just very nice. And he's just very generic in what he does. And also his NP is pretty nice if you have uh, arts focus. Like reducing enemy NP gauge can be very helpful in challenging stuff. Um, the inflicting of curse can be nice in certain boss fights that are kind of dependent on how much damage you do. Like there's certain bosses who have high defenses, but they are super immune to weak like, it's not immune to me, super immune. They're super weak to uh, stuff like Curse because it deals damage over time as opposed to um, actual physical attack. And he also has a 150% chance to reduce his defense for three turns, and it's by 30%. So if you just keep spamming this, you can drop their defense down a lot by the ten by the third turn or so before it disappears. But And he also has a stun chance, and it's 50% for the most part. And it's always nice to have 50% stun chance. Um, so yeah, in general, most people will pick Waver. Just because Waver is so good at what he does, and he's so generic at what he does, is that he can fit on basically any team comp. Uh, do you want, do you just need, like, a little bit more, like, for example, if you're Scotty, uh, trying to loop with Scotty, and you just need a little bit more NP, plug suit into Waver, boom, there's 50%, no fuss, no muss. Are uh, you using Merlin, and you just need a little bit more, uh, NP gauge, boom, bring in, bring in, bring him in, he will gladly give the 50% needed if you're running to, uh, Merlins, for example, uh, who both together combined give 40%, he'll give the 10% to give it a, a good 90% NP gauge, and at that point, you can kind of figure out some other stuff anyway. Um, if you're using arts, hey, you just need some more, boom, he's there, easily. <laughs> And that's true with some of the future stuff. Maybe in the future where we have stuff like Castoria. Because um, Castoria is coming this year, but then there's also Tamamo and there's Oberon. They're coming too. And maybe his ability to kind of just generically fit in anywhere is a little bit less appealing when there's so many supports. But even with that said, uh, that's two years from now. And for two years in general, just having a waiver is nice. Because a lot of the team comps that you can just do now because you have waiver 
and even when you do get a better support um there's still more comps that you can use because you have waiver so if you're just someone who says like i just want the best on here it's waiver and then if there's if you already have waiver i would suggest tamamo if you're looking to uh build into an arts future and you don't want to you want to have a fallback plan in case you don't get castoria then it's always nice to have tamamo there as a side uh unit because she can work very well with castoria and if it's not that then it's literally pick whoever you want uh from these sabers i would say the best one here is uh saber herself because the way she functions she's just a better version of both of these two kind of combined she uh altera i used her i have her bond 10 so i say this with confidence she just needs some buffs. She has some nice built-in kit stuff, but she's just not there yet, especially because Saber is just so crazy. And Mo is literally just like one skill upgrade away from being potentially on the same level as Atoria if she gets the same skill that she does, which is right here, which is this ability, which just allows her to go Buster Gorilla whenever she wants. Changes all own command cards types to Buster for one turn just nice to have <laughs> so even if you got unlucky with these and you drew a quick in an arts and you're like i want buster boom you have buster now congratulations so i think of the saber she's definitely the best on there for archers i don't think any of them i would say the one that probably speaks out the least to me is arjuna and i have arjuna and the reason is is that some of his skills are maybe not the best but that does not mean he's unusable like i said i used him and i was able to do a lot of uh stuff thanks to him so he's definitely usable he's just harder to use than you would like um i would probably say orion but even with orion like orion's skill too can kind of be a little bit useless or dead depending on your kind of enemy that you're fighting but the other stuff can be a little bit nice to have for sure but none of them jump out to me to be like eh, i don't feel any neg i don't feel a huge negative and i don't feel a huge positive either way for the Lancers, I'm kind of the same way. I know Inkiru is very good for challenge quests because uh, they have the ability to kind of heal themselves and against Divine, they're extremely good. And there's plenty of Divine enemies out there, so he can the, the, they can be just very useful against them. Uh, Bradamante does have one negative against her, and that's the fact that this is a negative for all of Lancers, though. All quick Lancers is that Parvati exists, and Parvati is amazing at NP looping. So any, <laughs> any AoE Lancer kind of has to run into the fact that Parvati at level one is better than them even the five stars when it comes to looping anyway so something to kind of keep in mind she does have a big defense and she does have a big butt which is usually very good and who doesn't like that on their side i like that on my side that's why i use Bra uh, bradamante even though i have Parvati. i will sometimes splash in bradamante because sometimes, sometimes you just need the butt uh, for the writers, I really like Ozzy. I think he's probably the best out of all of them because he has very fun gimmicks, like being able to get just a buttload of sunshine, and that can be good with um, uh, some future units. Um, one that I'm not mentioning, La uh, F uh, Fairy Gaiwen. Yeah, Lady Gaiwen, and then also Regular Gaiwen. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I know I know Lady Gaiwen's really real name, but in case someone doesn't want to be spoiled, I'm not going to mention it. And I would appreciate you if you followed the same code of ethics, but it's okay if you just want to say the name. I'm not going to be angry at you. Don't worry about it. Um, Achilles can also be very good for um, AoE quick uh, farming up, uh, which is very nice. He can also has a little bit of a defensive side. You can actually also use him for that in case the <laughs> in case some stuff goes bad and you need that defense. Um, for the casters, it's pretty obvious that these two stand out the most. I really like Sherazade, and I feel like Song Song is one really good strength in a way from being as good a uh, support as maybe Tamamo? No, as Bride Nero. Yes, as good as Bride Nero. Uh, she just needs one big buff. And Anastasia is just kind of similar to Sherazade, except for not as good as looping as Sherazade, but still very good if under the right circumstances. Like, for example, if you're using Castoria. And then you maybe you maybe you don't have enough to actually do it with Castoria. Boom! Play, plug suit in a waiver, huh? Get that little bit of extra that you might need. Even though she has 50%, she should be able to do it pretty easily. Of the assassins, I think Jack's old, and Hime has a very specific playstyle. Um, you have to be really into the idea of you have to be someone who really likes weird teams if you want to get the most out of Hime. You're, she unfortunately is not a unit that you can just kind of use willy-nilly you have to actually maybe think a little bit about how you want to use her if you want to get the most effect out of her especially because she's assassin 
and she doesn't really have an assassin kind of attacking way built into her. She's a little bit weird. Funny enough, similar to Tamamo Vit, she has a very different playstyle from most assassins that makes her very interesting to me. And maybe that's why, that's maybe she's actually the prototype. Hime had to walk in order for Vich to run. Uh, for the Berserkers, I really like Vlad the most. Uh, Vlad has a lot of utility. I think he's actually maybe a little bit underutilized. He's a Berserker who has basically two guts, which is very nice because Berserkers are squishy as fuck. Uh, these two have zero guts, but I will say that Nightingale can, uh, under certain circumstances, have huge defense and doesn't necessarily... If she's specifically fighting humanoid, she has um, big defense. And she can also have, uh, she also has a 50% buster uh, skill that she can give to anyone. <laughs> if she had some NP on her, I think she would actually be used as a buster support. Otherwise, she's just kind of a silly option that you can use because the rest of her uh, kit is kind of built around healing, so not really something you can use effectively. Um, Zhang Yu. Um, he can Scotty Loop, but you need to have Plug Suit Waver. So something to keep in mind, like I said right there, Waver, good to just splash anywhere. Uh, Zhang Yu just needs a little bit more NP, and he can get that little bit more NP from Zhang, from, uh, from Waver over here. Uh, other than that, he doesn't have a uh, any guts, which can kind of suck, but he is an AoE Berserker, so he's really mainly used for bers uh, for Berserking and <laughs> fighting AoE units, so don't worry about it too much. Jean! Jean is made one of the very few units who can go a thousand turns without dying. Does that sound fun to you? To some it does. If that sounds appealing to you, then Jean is your girl. If that doesn't sound appealing to you, Jean is not your girl. And so that's kind of you some of Jean. And Janako, I really like Janako, but the problem is that she's Moon Cancer and she can be a little bit weird to play with. And also I think her skill three, it's not that it's bad, it's just not like there. Like this ability is great. This ability is great. The fact that it only lasts one turn is not great. And the fact that it seals their skills is also not great. So she needs to be giving more than just this two for one turn in order to justify one turns of sealing the skill. Uh, but that's kind of why I kind of feel about Janako. I really like her. I do have her and I use her from time to time. It's just that in terms of usefulness, similar to Hime, I would say you have to go out of your way. And because she's Moon Cancer, she's really only amazing against Avengers. It's not like Summer BB where her kit is very fun funny to use and also she has a 50 percent np charge i feel like she has 30 percent though to be fair to her she has 30 percent that she can give to anyone 20 percent that she can give to anyone which is nice very nice uh and that's just kind of all the units right there i think i've very quickly kind of doing it i hopefully was able to go over them decently enough if you're someone who's kind of looking to decide which one of these to still kind of use we've it's a month away so you've got time um i think it's pretty straightforward like I said at the beginning, I think Waver is kind of the go-to choice. Mm -hmm. If there's a second go-to choice, it is Tamamo. And from then on, it's literally pick whoever you want. Pick whoever you want. If you're someone who's like, I hate Saber, let me go for Mo. I don't care what you just said and that she's uh, technically stronger and Mo's a weaker version of her. You know what I say to you? Go for it, my dude. Live your truth. Live in yourself. <laughs> Because if I were to choose between Saber and Mo, I would also go Mo, because her art is amazing. And that's kind of what I'm here for in this game. Like, look at that. How does that compare? She, though, to be fair, Saber does have the invisible sword. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. It's such a basic art, I forgot, but she does have the invisible sword. Yeah, yeah! Who doesn't like that? Anyway, that's enough screwing around for now. Again, if you need more help, feel free to leave a comment down below. If I am awake, I will gladly answer, or hopefully someone else will, if I'm not able to get there. Um, feel free to comment, tell me who you're gonna decide for the ticket. I'm always, if you have a specific case to say like, let me tell you about this servant and why I think they're amazing, leave it down there, man. I'll gladly read it. I love hearing what other people, I love it when someone dedicates themselves to a character because it really shows that they're here for the character and not for <laughs> and not for anything else shout outs to gay for edison that dude loves edison and has two level 100 edisons and i respect that and i love that and i love that style of play but again hopefully this helps if it did 
leave a like, comment down below, subscribe if you want some more, and that's it everyone, have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that hour or hour long version. If you want the hour long, if you want the Schneider cut, <laughs> tell me and I'll release it maybe. Till next time, goodbye.